Okay, uh, what other reactions can pyridine undergo? Pyridine can also undergo nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Now, why a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction? Um, we know that pyridine has a nitrogen in one of the, um, like in its ring structure, because of which it's going to withdraw electrons. And withdrawing electrons will create a partial positive charge on these two and the fourth position of pyridine. And therefore, it can be easily attacked by a nucleophile. So there are only two steps in the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. The first is the nucleophile is going to add to the ring where the leaving group is present. Okay, so the nucleophile will come and attack this carbon and it's going to thrust these electrons onto nitrogen, having a negative charge on nitrogen. And in the next step, uh, as these electrons come in here, the leaving group is going to leave. So here Z is the leaving group and that's going to leave, okay, which is this fastest step. Okay, so this is the mechanism for nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction of pyridine. Okay, and why at C2 and C4 position? Again, when you look into the intermediates that are formed uh, for the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction, you can see that at the 2 position and at the 4th position, you have 3 um, stable or 3 uh, intermediates that are formed, out of which one of them, one of them is going to be more stable but in the third position there are um, they are equivalent but um, they are comparatively less stable than the ones that are received in uh, two position and four position and therefore pyridine is going to go and is going to undergo nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction at the two and four positions Okay, now what if the leaving groups are different? Say, for example, if pyridine is going to have two leaving groups, then which one is going to be replaced? That's going to be dependent upon the basicity of the different leaving groups. So here we have a molecule which has two leaving groups. We have bromine and as well as we have um, um, OCH3. And which one is going to be a good leaving group? Obviously, the one that is a weak, weak base is going to be the better leaving group, right? So when there is a nucleophile, it's actually going to replace the bromine and not do anything with this part of the molecule. And um, uh, you get the compound. Okay. So here in this again, here in this example, we know that CH3 is, is a bad leaving group, but Cl can take its lone pair of electrons and leave, right? So when the methoxide ion comes in, it's going to actually replace the chlorine and not do anything with the methyl group. Okay. Okay. Uh, what are some of the reactions? Um, what are other reactions of pyridine? Pyridine can also um, um, undergo certain reactions on its side chain. So here is the substituted pyridine, pyridine where you have an alkyl group um, on pyridine. And uh, this alkyl group is actually, um, uh, this hydrogen right here is the allylic hydrogen. So when it is reacted with NBS, which is uh, N-bromosaccinamide, uh, specifically for allylic bromination, the hydrogen is going to be replaced by the bromine. Okay, so almost all the reactions that happen with the um, substituted benzenes can also happen with uh, pyridine. And uh, similarly, when you have an alkyl group on benzene, it can be actually um, oxidized to a carboxylic acid. And the same thing can happen with pyridine. So pyridine here has an alkyl group which can be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. Okay, diacetation reaction. Just as anilines undergo um, diacetation reaction, amino pyridines can also undergo diacetation reaction. Okay, so here is 2 amino pyridine which reacts with nitrous acid. Um, nitrous acid is got by um, reacting sodium nitrite in um, HCl at 0 degrees Celsius. So it is converted now into a diazonium salt. And this diazonium salt can be readily acted on by a nucleophile. So it's going to be replaced, it's going to replace them. The nucleophile is going to replace the diazonium part of the molecule. And then here in this case, it's an enol form because you have a double bond and also an OH. And we know that the keto form is the most stable form. So by rearranging the um, hydrogens and the double bond, you will get the keto form. And the same thing can happen when the amino group is in the fourth position. 
in this case you will get a gamma pyridone and now why this is a gamma pyridone because this is the alpha position this is beta and your carbonyl part of the molecule is actually in the gamma position with respect to the nitrogen and pyridine. Okay, acidity of metal group at C2 and C4 position on pyridine. Say for example, if you have a metal group in the fourth position or in the third position, then that hydrogen is connected to the carbon is going to be, the metal hydrogens are actually going to be very acidic. You can even um, connect the acidity of this hydrogen with the acidity of uh, the alpha hydrogens on the ketone. Okay, they are going to pretty much have exactly the same um, uh, uh, acidity. Okay, so because they are acidic, they can be really um, acted on by bases, uh, grabbing the where the base goes and grabs the hydrogen, making a carbanion. Okay, and that carbanion is going to be actually resonance stabilized with the um, with the nitrogen. Okay, now what are the reactions that this carbon ion can undergo? Okay, you can imagine that this is more like an enolate ion. So once after the base comes and abstracts this hydrogen, it's going to form an enolate-like structure. And this, um, uh, this um, carbon ion is going to go attack the carbonyl compound, giving, um, giving the um, addition product. And then finally... Uh, water will get eliminated to give the product. Now let's see whether we can do the mechanism for this reaction. So in the first step, these this carbon ion is going to go attack the uh, carbonyl carbon and thrust these electrons onto oxygen. So it's going to give. Remember the product for. Uh, aldol addition reaction it's going to be a beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone right depending upon the starting materials okay and in the next step um this would be protonated and uh, after that, it is going to undergo elimination reaction, actually condensation reaction, where it's going to remove water molecule. Okay, And that's going to put a double bond right there. It's going to put a double bond right there with the elimination of water molecules. So that's going to give... And um, you can also alkylate, uh, you can also form carbon-carbon single bonds using um, taking advantage of the uh, acidity, acidic methyl group. Okay, so here we have a methyl group in the second position. And remember, there's not going to be any effect on this methyl group because that's not going to be acidic at all because this nitrogen is going to withdraw the electrons only from the second position and in the fourth position. This methyl group is not going to be affected by the um, nucleophile at all. Okay, so um, when you look into this, uh, the, uh, the amino group is going to go grab this hydrogen and uh, forming the carbon ion and this carbon ion will go and attack the alkyl halide and thrust these electrons onto bromine forming the carbon carbon single bond okay so this is another way to form carbon carbon single bond uh, on um on an um on pyridine 